Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to Thursday night for the Minnesota, Wisconsin, Dakota's Council. This is Women's Night, and we are so glad that God has honored us with his word as handmaidens of God to proclaim the word of God. Last night, we heard from our men in the person of Southern Bishop David Johnson, and God has some more things in store for us tonight. We are featuring evangelist Sandra Riley. She's an outstanding international evangelist who is no stranger to the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world because she was once the vice president of the International Pentecostal Young People's Union. So we thank God for her. Pastor Bradby is going to lead us to the throne of grace and she's also going to read a scripture. So we want you to sit attentively as the word of God goes forth and as the people of God praise God. We also thank God for our diocesan, Bishop Richard D. Howell. God bless you and enjoy the worship with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll be reading for your hearing on today. Revelations chapter 11, 11 and 12 verse. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. At this time, we're going to have a word of prayer. Please bow your head with me. Most gracious heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we come before you right now, oh God. First, we want to thank you, oh God, for your goodness and your mercy. Oh God, we thank you, God, for what you've done already, oh God, and what you're about to do. Oh God, we ask you to bless your people on tonight, oh God. Touch, Lord, and crown my head to the sole of our feet. Oh God, we pray, Lord, that you would just minister to our hearts on tonight, oh God. We pray, Lord, you will speak a word, oh God. Oh Lord, move in a mighty way, oh God. Bless the speaker on this evening, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we appreciate you right now, oh God. Oh, Lord, you've been good, God. We thank you, oh, God, for being a keeper. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for being a mind regulator. Oh, God, we thank you, oh, God, for giving us the mind, oh, God, to come together on today. Oh, God, we thank you, oh, God, and we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Worship you, Lord. In the beauty of holiness, I worship you, Lord, and I give you praise. I worship you, Lord, in the beauty of holiness. Lord, I give you praise. For Come on up here. 
Wisconsin Dakota's District Council. I greet you on behalf of the Missionary and Christian Women Auxiliary. I am Lady Pamela Worlds from the Potter's House Apostolic Ministry in Burnsville, Minnesota. I come tonight to ask you, my sisters, to support us in offering and giving. We at the Potter's House often visit the topic of prospering God's way. We give to God in gratitude for what God has done and with expectation for what he's about to do. We plant seeds knowing that God will give the increase. Thank you for your generous support over the years. And tonight is no different. Ladies, we know how to be a blessing. We give in so many ways. Let us not hold back tonight. Give generously and our faithful God will, be, will replenish and supply all of your needs. There are many ways to give. Give through GiveLify, PayPal, or Cash App. Give and give generously unto the Lord, and he will keep his promises. Thank you in advance. Come to the altar and cast your cares on him. Hallelujah. Yes. 
yourself Do you thirst for a drink?
Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness, Forgiveness. was born. Sing it, Rachel. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The altar, the altar, yeah. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. She's blood. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, yeah, yeah. until this point and we know that God has met you in your homes and now we are ready for the word of God and I am so excited we are so excited to be able to introduce to you our speaker tonight a name that I have heard since I was a young girl growing up in the church none other than Pastor, Pastor Sandra, Sandra Riley Pastor Sandra Riley 
conference speaker, talk show host, seminar presenter, women and young adult workshop presenter, is one of the nation's highly sought after conference speakers who has obtained national and international acclaim across denominational lines. As president and CEO of Just For You Ministries, Pastor Sandra Riley has been touched by the hand of God and has received keen insight into what God speaks to this generation. Pastor Sandra Riley's passion for the depth and heights of God causes her to operate in the highest level of excellence in ministry. She possesses an unusual in-depth understanding of the Holy Word of God and is able to effectively execute the meaning a biblical text had for its original hearers into the application it has for believers of this time and culture. Sandra was a Dane minister at the Bethel Pentecostal Church Abundant Life Center in Grand Rapids, Michigan, under the pastorate of the late Bishop Will William C. Abney. She is presently an associate pastor at New Life Covenant Church Southeast, under the leadership of Pastor John F. Hanna. As an accomplished businesswoman, Sandra was has served as president and CEO of Robot Group LLC, Inc., a real, a real estate investment company specializing in rentals to low-income families. Pastor Sandra Riley can be seen every Saturday afternoon on The Word Network, where she hosts Just For You with Sandra Riley. She is featured in First Family Films documentary of women in ministry entitled Every Soldier Counts, and the African-American pulpit journal named Sandra, one of the emerging voices who will shape the future of the African-American church. Wow. Sandra's most recent accomplishment was becoming an independent certified coach, teacher, trainer, and speaker with the John Maxwell team. Sandra's travels across the U.S., and abroad conducting seminars, workshops, and conferences addressing issues that impact youth, singles, women, and men. Her approach reflects her sensitivity to the needs of God's people, emphasizing that this is the ministry just for you. So if you could put your hands together right yes. where you are, if you could say preach, preacher, whatever you need to say at the screen, we want to support her as she comes. You are going to be blessed. Come on and welcome Pastor Sandra Riley. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. I first of all want to say thank you for allowing me to be a part of this wonderful June Council to your diocesan bishop the Honorable Bishop Richard Howell, Jr., and to his lovely wife, Lady Betty Howell, to your district chair, Suffragan Bishop David Johnson, and the first vice chair, my dear friend, Suffragan Bishop Monica Parche Price, and to your second vice chair, Suffragan Bishop Jeffrey Smith, to the entire executive board of this great council and to all of our viewers that are watching us. I believe they're watching worldwide. We just thank and we praise God and we greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before I go into the word of the Lord, I want you to just join me for a moment of prayer. Wherever you are, in your living room, in, 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 in your office, Wherever you may be, stop right now and let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we are so thankful for this opportunity to come and to, to share. We thank you for this opportunity to give your name, the glory, the honor, and the praise. And Father, right now, I ask that you would allow your word to have free course and to minister to the hearts, the souls, and the minds of your people 
in the name of Jesus. Father, bring about a spirit even of conviction to those who may be watching that do not know you, God, in the pardon of their sins. Right now, we thank you for victory, power, and deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to go with me to the word of the Lord as it is found today in Acts chapter number three. I'm going to read a few verses today, uh, verses two through eight, okay? Acts chapter number three, verses two through eight. It reads as follows. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, oh, somebody ought to type in the chat or just say it right where you are. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse number eight. And he, leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God. I want you for a moment to give consideration to our subject. You, you can even speak it over yourself. You may not be in the room with anyone. If you are, you can say it to them. If you're not, speak this over yourself. Let this be your prophetic declaration over your situation right now. Decree and declare, say this, this situation is about to change. Come on. Some of you can type it in the chat right now. This situation is about to change. In our text, verse number two calls our attention to a certain man. It has been suggested when the Bible uses the phrase, a certain man, that means the man's name is of no significance. He is regarded as a nobody. He is someone of no reputation. Uh, they're not, there's not a whole lot that's happening in his life that is worthy to take note of. Everyone saw him and they passed him by. He was lame from his mother's womb and was carried. This means 
he was at the mercy of others. Every day in the same place, stuck. If for any reason now, there was no one available or willing to carry him, he would be stranded or stuck right where he was. I say to you today, don't allow yourself to get stuck and comfortable in debilitating, dysfunctional, and decaying situations. Don't settle where you stopped. I want to tell somebody today what you need is an exit anointing. God is going to hook you up with somebody to help pull you out of the situation that you're in. And I speak over somebody's life right now. You need to pray for divine connections. Daily, he was laid at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. The doors of the gate were, were covered with gold and Corinthian brass. He was laid at the beautiful gate in an ugly, ugly condition. They laid him in a good spot, but his life was in a bad spot. But I need you to remember, greatness is not determined by our environment. It is determined by what is on the inside of us. Your destiny is not defined by your history. So stop being a thermometer. That's what my father in the gospel, the late Bishop Abney used to always tell us. Stop being a thermometer and start being a thermostat. A thermometer tells you uh, what the temperature is, but a thermostat is what is used to regulate the temperature. If you don't like the temperature, you can change it with the thermostat. You can change the environment with a thermostat. You are a spiritual thermostat. Come on, somebody. Uh, don't put limitations on the power of God. Let God use you to bring about change. Verse number three says, when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked alms of them. The lame man didn't know he had come in contact with God's influencers. A person of influence empowers, enlarges, and adds value to other people. I say to you, listen to me good now. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you have the power of God living on the inside of you, you become a glory carrier. As a glory carrier, because you are carrying the glory of God on the inside of you. And as a glory carrier, God has given you influence. I need someone right now to just type in the chat, influence. I am an influencer for the kingdom. Pay attention now to verse number four. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, and they both looked at the man, and Peter says, look on us, or another translation, look at us. Focus 
That's what he was saying. Remove all distractions. Why? Because we participate in the development of our faith. Peter was saying, God is about to do something and he needs your participation. You don't need to be distracted by what's around you. Look on us. You need to get your faith built up. Look on us because you've got to participate. Because he wanted him to know that your attention is needed. Because it's time for you to make a move. You're not going to lay here or lie here for the rest of your life. Look on us. Give us your attention because it's time to make a move. This situation is about to change. Years of begging and dependency upon everyone else had taken what I believe was an emotional toll on this man's self-esteem and self-worth. He appears in the text to have a low opinion of himself. So the very first thing, watch this now, that Peter had the man do was look up. And he, he wanted him to look up. And when he said, when you look up, look squarely at me. Get your eyes on me. You know, I want to pause for a moment and just tell somebody, look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. As this prophetic word is coming forth today, right now, to shift you, I don't want you to miss it. You don't need more friends. You don't need more associates. Hear me today. You don't need more sympathizers. What you need is the power of God to be manifested in your life and in your situation right now. You need power from on high. Verse number five states, he expected, watch this, to receive something of them. You know, there is a very close relationship between what I expect God to do and what I believe God can do. Lower your expectations in people and raise your expectations in God. Expectation sets the atmosphere for miracles to be released. It is the confident belief that something, good God Almighty, is going to happen. I'm, I just want somebody to know right now, something is going to happen for you today. I believe God is going to exceed your expectation. Yes, even over this virtual airways, I believe that God is going to minister to you in a mighty way. You need to type it in the chat right now. Expect to receive something right now. Expect to receive something today. Expect to receive deliverance. Expect to receive a miracle. Expect to receive healing, expect to receive your way out of no way. Come on, somebody, expect, expect, expect. Oh, right where you are, you can put your hands together and give the Lord some praise right there. Come on, come on, give him some praise, right? Listen, right where you are, lift your hands right where you are and give him some praise. Verses six and seven read, then Peter said, silver, and gold have I none. 
<laughs> but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, somebody say immediately. Come on, type it in the chat. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Peter and John first have to correct this man's expectation. We don't have silver and we don't have any gold to give you. This man had sat by the gate and begged for so long that he had no expectation of ever rising above his situation or his condition. In his mind, his heart, in his spirit, I, I, I believe he had become uh, just complacent and felt like this was going to be his lot in life. It appears that his greatest hope, his greatest expectation was that Peter and John would drop a few extra coins in his cup so that he could go on being what he had always been, a lonely, lame beggar. <laughs> but I'm here to let you know that we see the manifestation of God's power in this text. And his situation was about to change. And I'm not just talking about him. I'm talking about you. There are those of you that are watching right now and you've been believing God for transformation. You've been believing God for, for change. You said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of, of the same situation, going through the same thing. This, the struggle that I've been going through for over a year now, this struggle is real, but I'm here to release a word over you, over your family, over your physical condition, over your finances. Come on here somebody, this situation is about to change wherever you are, clap your hands and give the Lord some praise. What we see in this text is that Peter and John, watch this now, are the visible manifestation of the power of God or as I referenced earlier, the glory of God. Peter and John were glory carriers. They've, they've already, by the time we get to Acts, the third chapter, they've already had the upper room experience. They've already been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. They've already seen what the power of God living on the inside of them can do. They, they, they had the power as glory carriers to arrest the environment when they showed up. They knew it. They understood it. Do you know that when glory carriers, and I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, yes, you glory carrier, when glory carriers show up, you ought to expect things to change. I don't care how bad they have been going. When glory carriers show up, expect there to be a change. You arrest the environment. You arrest the environment at your family reunions. You arrest the environment in your community. You arrest the environment. Come on now. At the business meeting, you arrest the environment. That's why when you walk in the rooms, things begin to shift because you are carrying the glory. They may not know how to articulate what they feel, those who are in the room, but they know that when you walk in, there's something different. There's an acknowledgement of your presence. There's sometimes they're acknowledging you and don't even understand why they're acknowledging you. And let me pause for a moment and say to you, people of God, stop 
Stop excusing uh, 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 people when they when they want to stop doing the wrong thing when you walk in the room. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, no, don't, don't tell them it's all right for them to continue to use bad bad language in your presence, or or you at a reunion and they they're smoking but they're trying to hide the cigarettes because you came into the room or came to where they were and you say, oh, that's all right. No, it's not all right. That's not what you say. What you say in love to them is thank you so much for respecting the glory, hallelujah, that's on my life. Thank you for respecting the power of God that's on my life. Because when you walk in the room, things change because you are a glory carrier. Come on, somebody. Glory carriers expect something to change. The Bible says he took him by the right hand. Or watch this. He pressed or squeezed his hand. People of God, the emphasis of that text is that he touched him. When he grabbed his hand, when he squeezed his hand, when he pressed his hand, he was touching him. Come on, blood wash believers. You cannot change what you are not willing to touch. He touched him. Notice now, they didn't pray for the man. Did you did, have you ever noticed that in the text? They don't say, now come on, let's join hands and let, let, let's believe God for your healing. They don't pray for the man. Watch the text. No. What they did was use the authority that was available to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when he leaped up, this man was doing something by faith now that he had never done before in his 40 plus years of living according to Acts 4 and 22. He had never done this before. Now, and, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, that, that he had never, probably had never even tried to do this before. But Peter placed a demand on the man and the man was able to do something that he had never done before. Do you understand? God is about, to place a demand on you to do something you have never done before. He said, rise up, attempt to do it, try it one more time. Stop sitting back feeling sorry for yourself, sad, bad, and mad all at the same time, depressed, oppressed, obsessed, looking like you don't have car fare to get to the welfare. No, rise up, my brother, rise up, my sister. Uh -uh. You may have failed at it once, but get up and attempt to do it again. God is on your side. Try it one more time. You have to understand when you are clear about your purpose, it will help you to know the difference between an opportunity and a distraction. God is saying, listen, don't allow the fact that your legs might be a little wobbly and you didn't just, you know, jump up and start running all of a sudden immediately. No, 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 no. Your legs might be a little wobbly, but you got to keep on trying. You've got to keep on moving. Now, don't allow fear to cheat you. I'm talking good to somebody right now. Second Timothy uh, chapter number one, verse number seven says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Come on now of love and of a sound mind. You've got to feel the fear and do it anyway. Come on here. Come on. Tell yourself that right now. Somebody needs to speak it over yourself. Uh-huh. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the fear of stepping out on faith and do it anyway. Feel the fear of starting that business and do it anyway. Feel the fear 
of believing God, hallelujah, and taking those steps of faith that he has told you to, to take and do it anyway. You need to clap your hands right where you are and give God the praise. Oh, now listen, just for the sake of discussion, and just for the sake of discussion now, maybe this man had been told for a long time that he couldn't walk. So because they kept telling him he couldn't walk, he stopped hoping or dreaming about walking one day. I've got a question for you. What areas in your life have those negative voices around you stopped you from dreaming about and stopped you from hoping about? Do you understand that I I'm just not preaching to you? I am here today as a repellent of hope destroyers and dream killers. Come on, I'm here to help you to resurrect your hope and resurrect your dreams. God is saying, I have not brought you this far to leave you. Come on, what I, the dream that I put in you, come, we're going to resurrect it right now. You, you buried it. God didn't bury it. You buried it. But right now is your time for a resurrection. Peter and John, they called something out of this man that had not been manifested yet. Oh, I got to stop. I'm calling forth your ministry. It hasn't been manifested yet, but I call it forth. Man, woman, I call forth your healing. I call it forth. I call forth your healing. Even though you have pain in your body while you're watching right now, the healing hasn't manifested yet, but I'm calling it forth. Oh, hallelujah. Woman who is concerned about how you are going to make ends meet this week, I call forth your re resources, even though it hasn't manifested yet I call it forth in the name of Jesus hallelujah uh-huh God is calling it forth in you that's what he's doing for you in your personal life he's saying listen I'm calling forth things out of you I'm, not, I'm calling forth who you were created to be I'm not just calling forth who you are no. God is saying no I'm calling forth who you were created to to be. What are you believing God for right now? Because I need you to understand what you are believing God to do in you is already in you right now. He's saying, what, I've, what I'm going to do, it's already in you right now. I've got to call it forth. It's not on the outside of you. Come on, somebody. It's already on the inside of you. He is calling forth what he is already put in in you. Come on, somebody. You need to type in. It's already in me. Uh-huh. It's already in me. It doesn't look like it, but it's already in me. It doesn't feel like it, but it's already in me. It's already in me. God is calling it forth. This situation is about to change. Come on and clap your hands and give him some praise. This man has what we call a paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. That's when you get new information that brings about a dramatic change. He gets a paradigm shift. Somebody right now, as you're watching, God is giving you a paradigm shift. You're starting to see yourself being able to do some things that the enemy had told you would not be done because it was taking so long. The devil is a liar. Come on, y'all. God is control is in control of time. He has his own time schedule. And in due season, you're going to reap if you faint not. We are called to step out on faith and take a leap 
of faith and do something we've never done before. And I want to tell you, get around people who will challenge you. Stop hanging around people that can't pray their way out of a wet paper bag. Get around people who are going to challenge you to do better and to not pacify your dis function. Come on now. Now watch this. The Bible says after he gets up, he jumps up. And I don't believe, and, 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 and go with me now, I don't believe even though the way this is written that he just jumps up and he just walks and, 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 and oh, it, everything is fine. Remember, he is doing something he has never done before. I believe that his steps initially were wobbly. You know how it is when a child first learns how to walk. They don't just jump up off the ground and just go to walking and running. At first, they wobble a little bit. They fall and get back up. I believe that there was some wobbling going on, that there was some, some instability at first. But you know what? He did not stop. He kept on moving. And, and, and now the Bible says, now that he's got himself together, he's got his balance together, he, he's got his, his walk together, he's got his strut together. The Bible says he went into the temple and walked. Watch this. And leaped. Come on, somebody. And praising God. Do you notice what it tells us? As, as, as sometimes we overlook this portion of the text. The man has done something he has never done before in his life. He is walking something he probably believed he'd never do. But once he does it, he doesn't get up and go to Mama Nim's house. Come on. He doesn't get up and go to try to find June bug to show June bug he can now walk. He doesn't even go to try to find the ones that had been lying him at this gate daily to thank them. He said, I can thank you all later. Right now, I'm going into the house of God. I'm going into the temple to worship. Why? Because I believe the man was saying, I've got to give the Lord a pass do praise. Is there anybody watching right now, good God Almighty, that owes God a past due praise? This situation that you are in is about to change and you ought to start praising him right where you are. But I've got a question for you that lies within our theme for, for, for this council. And the question I have for you is that when, when, when this situation come, changes, when it, when it comes to an end, what are you going to do after that? Well, we know that when this man's situation changed, what did he do after this? He went into the house of God and he began to worship. But after this, what are, what are you going to do? Uh huh. Watch the man now. After this, no one had to beg him to go and to show how much he appreciated God for everything God had done for him. After this, no one should have to beg us or thank us to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Listen, I don't care where you are right now while you are watching, in the living room, in the family room, in the office, on the porch, in the bedroom, even if you're in the bathroom. Listen, when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us. Oh, let's pause right there. Six 
100,000 people have died in the United States of America from COVID-19, but we are still here. That's a good place to give him some praise. Come on. Somebody is watching right now. You were sick from COVID, but you're still here. You were hospitalized, but you're still here. The doctors had to give you oxygen, but you're still hush and uh, you're still here. Somebody is watching and they put you on a ventilator. Good God Almighty, but you are still here. Our souls ought to cry out, Hallelujah! Praise God. God for saving me. I just want to tell somebody right where you are, honey, don't hesitate. Don't wait another moment. Don't wait another second. Don't wait another hour. Open up your mouth and praise him. Enemies will be overcome when you praise him. Your praise, hallelujah, will overtake your enemies. Victory will accompany your praise. Through your praise, the earth will yield what belongs to you. You are about to reap in places that you have not sown. And I decree and declare over your life that the law of gravity is being defied in the area of your blessings. Gravity says what goes up must come down. But I decree and declare when your blessings go up, they're going to stay up. When your healing goes up, it's going to stay up. When your turnaround goes up, it's going to stay up. When your resources go up, it's going to stay up. Oh, open up your mouth right where you are. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Come on, praise him right where I don't care if they're in another the room and they're trying to figure out what you're doing open you oh hear my past do praise come on now open up your mouth he mouth he's kept you uh, praise him right where you are magnify him right where you are glorify him right where you are this situation is about to change and god is changing it for you right where you are come on somebody give him glory come on come on come on give him honor come on come on come on i gotta stop but i just want somebody i just want to cause you to usher you i want to usher you in to a place of praise and to a place of worship come on open up your mouth get your hands up get your hands up right where you are and begin to praise him Thank him for how he brought you. Thank him for how he kept you. Thank him for how he left, never left you. The very fact that you are watching me right now means you are a witness to the goodness of God. So many didn't make it, but you are one of the ones who did. Open up your mouth right where you are and give the Lord some praise. He's worthy. I decree and declare as I close. Hallelujah. Man, God's going to make a way for you in that business. Yes, you. Yes, you, my brother. You're watching me. God is speaking to you right now. Even in that business, it looked like it was going to fold, but God, God wouldn't let it fold. And now it seems like you're just hanging on by a thread. Even as the world is opening up and things are turning around, you don't seem to feel like your business is turning around. But I hear God saying, uh-uh, I am with you. Uh, hallelujah, your situation, that thing is about to change. You've got to hold on and try Trust God and walk in your victory in the name of Jesus. That woman that is watching me from your bed, you are in the bed watching, not because you lazy, you are in the bed because you are afflicted in your body. But right now, I decree and declare over you, he was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
him and by his stripes you are healed you are healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet you are healed right now come on start moving your hands come on come on start moving your feet come on start moving your legs in those areas where there has been pain in those areas where you had felt like you couldn't make it in those areas where it didn't seem like there was any mobility and any movement I decree and declare that right now God is sending movement to you God is turning it around for you come on open up your mouth right where you are and begin to give God the praise decree and declare I am healed in Jesus name come on and bless him come on and bless him come on and pray Praise him. Come on and magnify him. Come on and glorify him. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord smile upon you. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you real good. God bless you, my dear brothers, sisters. I thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah, Bishop Howell and all of you. I thank and praise God for you. Hallelujah. Remember this situation is about to change in Jesus' name.